All right, on the bench we have a unit in Grant, uh, not to be confused with the uh, Grant XL. <clears throat> this is uh, just a regular Grant. So you can actually, I guess the best um, comparison or similarities would probably be with the Madison. Um, there are some differences, uh, especially um, in the audio area. Um, with the transformer and whatnot, but um, other than that, it is the uh, the same board as you'd find in the Madison. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's some subtle differences. Uh, you know, like a Cobra 2000 um, GTL, um, but it's uh, they're, they're all kind of similar anyway, right? Uh, like a, a Cobra 148, uh, a 140, um, similar but but different. But, uh, yeah, anyway, on this one here, though, uh, you'd probably find that the um, Madison um, board or chassis uh, is the same, except for the audio section. Uh, so, anyway, but this belongs to, um, let me read the paper here, he sent. Um, so, this is uh, Lewis down in uh, the great state of Florida. That's actually my middle name and my father's name. Um, so this belonged, uh, to his grandfather. Uh, it says here, looks like it turns on, um, display is out and two knobs are stuck. Um, so he just wants it, um, I guess fixed. So it's definitely seen some better days. It looks like it's been, um, maybe stored in a damp, um, environment. It's got uh, some green uh, corrosion uh, underneath the, the chrome. Uh, I think I can actually get a lot of that out. Um, it's not going to look 100%, but um, we could definitely get this radio looking better. Um, there's a little, let's see, uh, there's a little uh, discoloration there. And uh, you could definitely get that looking a little bit better. But this one here, this channel 9 button stuck. Um, RF gain's working. Uh, mic gain's working. RF gain's working. Clarifier is working. Volume and power button is working. Okay, squelch is what's stuck. And the mode is working. All right, the channel channel selector is stuck. All right, so, yep, we got the channel selector and uh, the squelch. Um, and no display. But I think what's supposed to happen here is this button, this channel 9 button is pushed in. This one right here. So when that's pushed in, this channel 9 light should come on, but it's not, so... And uh, that display should come back on. I don't want to force it, but okay, it's starting to move a little bit. Okay, just a little stuck. All right, so the display does work. So, yeah, when you push this in, the display is supposed to turn off, and that channel 9 LED is supposed to come on. So, I don't know if that LED is burnt out or you know, whatever, um, figure that out, but the channel display does work, bright, uh, dim does work, and, um, it does transmit, I didn't check receive yet, so, let's see if this, uh, modulation SRF button works, audio, 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 all right, let's check modulation, Audio, 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 audio. Yeah, it's working. Modulation's working. All right, let's see what we got for. Audio, audio, audio. All right, just around like 14 or so. Audio, 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 audio. Yeah, right around the same. 
and the bird. Um, all right, let's uh, let's put the signal generator on here and uh, see if it's receiving. All right, stand by. All right, we're on channel seven. Well, we're having uh, it is receiving, but because the squelch um, is seized up, uh, I'm gonna have to take care of that first. Um, but I am sending a, uh, a minus 20 signal to it, so uh, it should overcome that squelch, and it is. So it's it's definitely receiving, but uh, I'm not getting any um, not getting any audio. Um, so who knows what's up with that? But it is receiving according to the meter there. But uh, anyway. So I think the first, the first thing to do here would be to take care of these uh, seized up um, uh, knobs, that channel selector switch and the squelch, uh, get those fixed and then uh, reassess this, uh, this receive. Alright, let me try to, uh, I'm going to get this open and see what's going on uh, on the inside. Alright, stand by. Alright, so I've got it open. It's definitely been stored in a... Uh, not in a really hospitable environment here. So, definitely in a damp area because if this is uh, starting to turn green and stuff, it's uh, definitely a sign that um, moisture has uh, just been kind of collecting on it, which is unfortunate. But um, let me try to free up these, um, these two switches here and. Um, yeah, we'll take it from there. But otherwise, other than that, it looks um, it looks like uh, it hasn't been modified in any way. It looks like it's just stock, which is good. Yeah. So nothing's been um, nothing's been modified. So and that's good. We'll leave it that way. So uh, all right, let me uh, try to get these two. Uh, the um, squelch and the uh, channel selector freed up, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, stand by. All right, this thing's become a nightmare. It is. Uh, I had to get these switches off in order to get at the rest of the radio, and uh, unfortunately, I had to. Um, one, two, three, four switches broke. Um, to try to uh, fortunately I was able to save the mode the mode switch and believe it or not the squelch uh, is intact in the uh, channel selector but man this is just uh, a mess uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to um, get these switches uh, fixed uh, I might have to put new ones in but my main concern here is the on and off volume switch. But uh, anyway, let me um, let me continue on here. This is a uh, it's quite a mess. All right, stand by. All right, well, I'm chipping away at these um, issues this thing's having. So I was able to get the channel selector uh, moving again, and uh, seems to be working okay. Uh, unfortunately, I have to put in some new potentiometers, um, at least these three here, which I have, I have a whole kit that, um, you know, I can put these in, so I just label these, just so I know what they are, um, mic gain, uh, what's that, clarifier, I think, uh, RF gain and then clarifier, and I have all these values, uh, this is what, this is, uh, a 20k this is a 1k and I think that's a 1k as well yeah 1k so I have all these in stock um, my main concern was getting this volume uh, potentiometer um, yeah it fell apart on me but anyway I mean I wasn't gonna put it back together but I, I tried opening it up uh, to no avail but fortunately, the um, reason why we keep parts radios, uh, you know, people who work on 
um, customers, radios, uh, techs, whatever you want to call us. Uh, that's why we keep parts radios. So this actually came out of a, um, a Johnson, what is this thing here? A Viking 352D uh, parts radio I had from a previous, um, I bought a parts radio for a, uh, a uh, another radio I had done. And uh, sure enough, so this here is a, this is what, uh, 10K uh, with the on and off option. And I had lots of uh, 50K for some reason. Uh, I had a lot of 50K pots with the on and off. Uh, but I didn't have, um, I didn't have a 10K. But fortunately, this one here is, and it's a better switch actually. This is a really nice switch. Uh, here's a 10K out of that Johnson. That's going to fit in here perfectly. So, uh, yeah, I was able to pry off. Um, the knobs um, off of the um, the broken uh, potentiometer ends there, the shafts. Um, so yeah, so now I'm just going to go ahead and swap out this uh, on and off switch, uh, get that back on, um, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and clean up the rest of this uh, this radio. I'll probably put this um, under some. Uh, hot water and some dish detergent and then I'm going to try to buff out that yellowness that you see in there that's that, that's just horrible um, I'm not sure if um, on top of having this being stored in a bad place this person might have been a smoker uh, I'm not knocking smokers I, I smoked for a long time as well um, fortunately I quit but uh, uh, you know this does happen um, you know you get that yellowing um, you know, like that as well. So it's it's a possibility that um, you know whoever had this before was a was a smoker. You know, let me tell you, I mean, you know, back in the late seventies, uh, early eighties. I mean, even beyond. But uh, you know, smoking was almost uh, it almost went hand in hand uh, with uh, C being. So uh, I'm not surprised. But I'll try to get that. Um, I'll try to get that uh, as uh, clear as I can. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at right now. So, and I think I have an LED um, I can put in there, which is right there. Again, off of another Pots radio, so that should fit right in there perfectly. Uh, that's for the uh, channel nine uh, indicator. So yeah, that's where we're at now. I'll get this cleaned up as well. Um, so I want to just get this radio functioning properly before I do a recap. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the plan here. So let me get at all these, uh, broken potentiometers and, um, get this thing, uh, back to work in order. Um, and, uh, we'll take it from there. All right, stand by. All right, so it's been a few days since I've had this on my bench, but I've, uh, made some progress as far as, uh, cleaning and, um, getting some potentiometers. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to touch upon, um, some things to note with these uh, pots, but uh, I got <clears throat> as much as I could cleaned and uh, scraped up some of that rust and um, put some uh, rust-oleum on the um, some of these bad pots here. It helps slow down that um, that rust. But uh, these cleaned up pretty good. Um, not show quality but definitely way better than than what they were so I would say acceptable I got the front um, face plate um, way better I still couldn't get that um, nicotine residue um, off of that um, that display there which is unfortunate but it is what it is. Uh, so since uh, since this had, since the last time this has been on my bench, um, I spoke to uh, Lewis, who this uh, this radio belonged to his grandfather, and he did confirm that he was a smoker and that this was um, actually stored in a shed. So that's why it was in as bad of shape as it um, as it was. Um, Again, I, I touched upon smoking. Not, nothing against smokers. It, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, you do get that. 
Um, like I stated before, I was a smoker myself, so I'm not going to be uh, be here criticizing people who smoke. But um, anyway, yeah, um, this came out this came out nice, acceptable. So this whole radio is going to be um, not perfect, but I think these things are going to uh, yeah, I cleaned up these uh switches as best i could um with some polish i think they came out okay um you can see here some more of them and uh what else can i say about this yeah they came out they came out all right um again acceptable you know i wanted to try to keep things as original as possible and try to keep costs down as well uh, sure, I can go out and buy a POTS radio and, um, you know, swap out everything for uh, for better, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm just trying to keep costs down. So, um, and anyway, try to keep it as original, give it character, as they say. So now, something I wanted to note about these potentiometers. So, something here, you can see here, so this one here. It's a 1K pot, but if you notice it has an A on it, and that does make a difference. So this is what's called an audio, A stands for audio, uh, an audio taper, meaning um, you'll see, yeah, this, re this replacement one. I like to use um, whatever came with the radio and you can see this one here is a replacement 1k that's going to go in for the uh rf this thing will have a focus that's a b so that's a linear tapered uh potentiometer so what does that mean here I, the best way to show you is uh let me get this back up on the computer here so this is from seymour duncan uh, and a lot of this is like, uh, you'll find it in audio, uh, like guitar amps and uh, stuff like that. Uh, actually, um, somebody who maybe fixes guitars or guitar amps can kind of touch upon this. Uh, I know there's a couple of people who watch this channel work on guitars. But anyway, you can see here that the A is audio taper. And you can see how you increase or decrease. It's more of a curved slope versus the B which is linear, straight line. Uh, is there going to be a difference that you're going to notice? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I would say probably not. Uh, but just for the sake of uh, keeping things as original as possible, um, I use whatever um, you know, came with the radio. So this is for the mic, mic gain, obviously dealing with audio. And then this one here is a 1, uh, it's a B linear so this is the rf uh gain pot so i try to uh keep things as original as possible uh, whenever i'm replacing something could you go ahead and use a b instead of this a yeah you i'm sure you probably could um and it's probably not going to be anything really noticeable but uh again when dealing with audio you'd want to use the audio taper um, they do cost a little bit more, uh, like I don't even stock, um, here, the A, um, potentiometers, uh, I just have the B, but whenever I do come across that, I just take note of whatever they are and, uh, you know, buy it. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is an uh, Audio 1K that's going to go in there. So, again, uh, you know, it's... Should you use the right one? Yeah. Um, is it the end of the world if you put a B instead of an A? Probably not. So, but I just wanted to make that uh, make that distinction between um, potentiometers. If you guys do come across potentiometers, not just in CB radios, you know, whatever electronics you may be working on, um, there is a difference. Um, so yeah, that's something to note. So now. Once I get those two uh, potentiometers in, I'm going to go here and uh, start attacking some of this glue that's in here with some uh, acetone. Yeah, some of the uh, more trouble spots here. Your typical, your typical unit in uh, 
spots that you see they're, they're always going to be in the same areas um, you know that's just what it is you can see down well maybe you can't see down in there but by that capacitor there there's there's glue it's usually always 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 in the same areas where you see the uh, that uh, that glue so that's next um, and then uh, I'm gonna recap this and that's about it go through the alignment and uh, put it all back together so uh, what I'm gonna do next is um, get those pots in get the glue out recap this and then uh, we'll take it from there and then we'll do our usual the tests I always do we'll do a sensitivity test we'll do a uh, transmit test we'll do a uh, a uh, monitor radio test you know etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, it's coming out okay it's coming out all right it'll be uh, it'll be a good user quality radio and uh, Lewis will have his uh, grandfather's radio back in uh, good work and order all right stand by all right the radio's done I uh, got an LED meter in there brightened up things a little bit uh, kind of got rid of that yellow tinge that was there uh, channel 9 LED is working now. Yeah, everything's uh, everything's working good. Radio's looking a hell of a lot better than what it was. Uh, I still got a little, some spots here and there, but I polished. Uh, I took some um, trucker's polish, uh, that purple stuff I normally use, and I uh, got these knobs looking way better. I got the switches looking way better. And uh, it's recapped. All Nietzsche con caps. And uh, it's aligned and uh, ready to go. I'm just happy I was able to save this uh, for Lewis. But um, here's all the pots, uh, some of the caps, um, some of the parts of the potentiometers and whatnot. So this radio's come a long way. Oh, that's all the glue that was in there. This one had a ton of glue in it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it for the radio. Uh, it's it's um, working really really well. So let's do a. Uh, We'll do a transmit test. So you can see it's right on four. All right, four watt carrier. You can look at the bird. Bird's always going to be like three quarters of a watt uh, to a watt tighter. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. All right, let's uh, see what it looks like on the scope. A really good waveform. Let me see if I can get this uh, slowed down a little bit. Hold on. Sorry about the glare up there too. All right, there we go. It's a little better. Yeah, it's a good waveform. About 90%, 90, 95% uh, modulation. It's right where uh, I'd, I'd align this to spec. So that's um, back to original. And uh, let's get this on the frequency counter. All right. Channel 19. perfect yeah this thing is uh, this thing came out really really good so uh, why don't we do a uh, I don't have a before and after sensitivity test um, but uh, you know after I aligned it, it uh, I noticed uh, some of the stuff was in uh, some of the uh, potentiometers and stuff was in uh, they weren't up to um, up to peak so uh, I'm sure this thing's gonna be uh, have some really good ears. So let me get this up on the uh, signal generator and um, I'll put an S9 to it. Um, yeah, I can probably get these covers back on and then uh, we'll just go through our usual tests. So uh, let's see what she's doing for uh, Synad. All right, stand by. All right, there's an S9 right on. It's upside down, but yeah, it's right on.
All right, see what's doing, what she's doing with the sensitivity. I'm trying to keep this glare off. It's 80, 90, 100, 110. One eleven. Minus one eleven. Can still go more. One twelve. One thirteen. Let's see what we got. Minus one ten. 11, 12, 13 and a half. That is a really good listening radio. Yeah, minus 113 dBm at 12 dB of Sunad. So that's, this, uh, this receive is uh, top notch here. So we got a good, uh, a good all around radio, I'd say. So now, um, the only thing left to do would be to um, see how it sounds on the other end and uh, see if we can get some skip and whatnot and um, take it from there. All right, let me get these covers back on and uh, that's it. Stand by. All right, radio is on 19. We got the monitor radio over there. Let's see how it sounds. Testing one two three four one two three four audio 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 one two three four testing out this unit in Grant. Yeah, I think it's sounding really good. Testing one two three four four three two one audio 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 one two three four. Test, 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 audio, audio, audio. Testing one two three four one two three four. I think this Grant is sounding really good. Get up with this static mic. Yeah, it's nice and clear, punching through. Yeah, I like the way this radio sounds. Yeah, this radio sounding really good, guys. It's all set. It's tough to beat these unit and Grants. Um, yeah, so there you have it. Um, I was kind of skeptical uh, at first with this radio, you know, but. Uh, it came out pretty good, I think. So, uh, last thing to do is uh, try to get some skip. Hopefully we get some uh, sideband going, and uh, uh, that'll be the last part of the video. All right, stand by. All right, I think we finally have some skip coming in. I actually had to wait the next day, so... Um, yeah, because Skip just hasn't been, uh, I don't know, just hasn't been uh, rolling in lately. But uh, anyway, yeah, the radio's looking good. So let's see what's going on here. Maybe we can get some sideband going as well.
Pittsburgh, 286 north of Pittsburgh. Sounding good. This is 8255 Phoenix. 275415. How about at 8255 Phoenix? How about at 8255 Phoenix? This is 320 Gloucester, Mass. 320 Gloucester, Mass. And it is busy. Let's move on. Got another shot. Seven five seven Colorado. That's great audio. Whoever you are, you're uh, you're doing a good job with that radio. All right, guys. Um, I think that's it. I don't want to keep uh, boring you guys with uh, the skip, but uh, just a little preview of um, you know how good this radio is uh, performing. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, Lewis, hopefully. Uh, you know, you'll use this and, um, you know, enjoy it. You know, uh, I know it was your grandfather's and um, uh, that's about it. So enjoy it.